So why do we need a quality recycling process? Why are we really in this, um, at this moment in time talking about? It's simply because uh, the so-called chicken and egg dilemma in the recycling industry today, which is keeping us to relatively low recycling rates for the flexible packaging, which are driven by relatively low collection rates, if we look at entire Europe, this is really linked to the perception that it is not possible to have high quality recycling um, in flexible packaging, therefore there is not high quality recycling system. So consequently, we have only 70% of all flexible packaging throughout Europe, which is actually collected and recycled in Europe. And how is this happening? Well, we all know that um, Traditionally, right? So what is the state of play today is the flexible packaging would be sorted in most of the sorting plants is a, what is called the street and bale. You will find it like this in the following slide, but in essence is the polyethylene film bale. And what starts to emerge is the so-called PioFlex bale, which is what Germany introduced at first, and now we're seeing it emerging in other countries, slowly, slowly to really capture also the polypropylene film. And what's happening with these bills, they would be submitted for recycling to a conventional, uh, simple uh, recycling system with, with wet washing and, and extrusion, simple extrusion, which would bring the polymers to a certain quality, the status for today. So um, here it's where um, I'm starting to explain what in status quo it's that we aim to change and why. So basically, if we take the three ten stream, um, we can say safely that everything which is collected and sorted for recycling would go into what we can call the robust recycling, either bin bags or um, um, can be other um, type of film, even construction film. But in essence, because of the way sorting is done, really pushed by quantity, with a quantity of, of plastic, um, being reported as being recycled um, in the stream, about half of it only is recycled into this robust recycling and the other half would go to residue to um, in, in form of energy from waste end of life. Now with the other stream, the situation is it's a little bit worse, actually it's, it's not good today because only about 30% estimated amount of this PO flex, which is being produced today in Europe, and it's produced in small quantities, only 30% stays in Europe for recycling and the rest goes to export. And these are exports what we can really uh, kind of um, in confidence call dubious exports because we don't know really where this material gets. And similarly, like for 310, um, about half of, of this quantity would get into recycling, robust recycling, into street benches, for instance, you know, what, what we know, a saturated ma uh, market, but a valuable market. And the other um, half would go again to energy from waste. So what we aim to, to really change in the state of play of the recycling industry today is divert from ex export what is sorted for recycling and be able to elevate the value of the material through this quality recycling process into more demanding recycling. So in essence, what this we believe would help us achieve, provide incentives for collection with increased recycling rates. How? By putting in place the quality recycling system, meaning the infrastructure which would make this possible really addressing the famous chicken and egg um, question. So if this is why we want to do it, then what exactly does it mean, the quality recycling process? So in essence, it's a, it's a sequence of four new steps, but steps which are achieved with existing technologies. It exists. The equipment is there, it can be done, but it's not implemented. So these four steps are, number one, an additional sorting by polymer and by color, which will take out the valuable film fractions from these traditional BL310 and PureFlex. 
followed by coat washing, which will help to further remove the residues, labels, organic residue, which cold washing cannot properly and completely um, remove. Followed by extrusion with an extra filtration, which will further remove not only volatiles, but also most, if not all, of the non target polymers. And last but not least, the odorization in order to remove the odor characteristic for household collected PCR type of waste recycling. What does this give to us so far? Well, it already through this initial uh, step out of the four in the quality recycling process, what we're achieving is we are aiming to reduce the amount of residue which will go to energy from waste to be demonstrated in the next slide. We are basically aiming to completely divert the um, plastic waste which would go to export because it does not have a perceived value in Europe yet. And yes, it will be residue still produced, but compared to total amount of what goes to export, it's gonna be significantly less. So the question which remains from here, can we valorize these materials as we are showing here, saying that from a bale of 310, we aim to get a bale of film fraction and a bale of PE flex, and similarly for PO flex, a bale of PP film and a bale of the new PO. In conclusion, what we can state is that the quality recycling pro, um, process does deliver on our goal to increase the quantity and the quality of the material which can be recycled. And hopefully these visuals are gonna make, uh, make it very simple for you to, to get it. The other important thing is demonstrate the applications. So collection shrink has been demonstrated by two converters, so far at 30% recycled PE. The only reason for which we didn't do more is because we're waiting now from new uh, materials from uh, industrial trials um, to go beyond um, 30% up to 50% has been tested even for tilt test um, in uh, PepsiCo. For recycled PE, um, Constancia had already proven the possibility to create pouches. Um, and for the recycled PP, um, I think that we're very proud at CFLEX to have demonstrated the possibility to be used in, uh, in bio-oriented film, which can be further used in stand-up pouch um, to convert the study and see who had participated to this. So what I can show you today is um, the business case for investment uh, at the stage where it is today. So if we take um, the case of 310, so you take a 310 bale and you do conventional recycling, we, and we do not consider for the moment, in, in this uh, simulation of the business case, we did not include the gate fee because the gate fee is something variable, Northern Europe, Southern Europe, different values. It can go, it can come. So without the um, gate fee, uh, the business case is showing for that um, the baseline, you know, the business as usual uh, is not uh, bringing money to recyclers while moving to the um, quality recycling process. And doing this separation of recycled PE film, and then you're left with a drop, um, for sure there is value creation. And again, this does not consider any uh, money, any value brought by the um, uh, gate fee. In the case of um, the PO flex uh, stream, um, the PO flex um, is basically not recycled um, it's, it goes to compression molding, doesn't even need to, um, to be recycled more than sorted as a bale and sent to compression molding. Uh, 
So here we did not have a baseline, but looking strictly at the business case, what, what came out is clearly the need to have a subsidy to uh, make um, a profit or break even or make profit um, in this case. So basically the conclusion is that a recycler who is choosing to do both 310 and PO flex might have a compensation between two and also uh, the subsidy will certainly help the business case for the value creation. So in conclusion, we believe that we have a clear evidence that there is a business case for investment in, in the infrastructure first and, and foremost because um, the volume of recycling can be increased and the value can be increased because of the creation of new qualities which did not exist before and which have an end market. An important thing is that it's already uh, seen and foreseen incremental value for the uh, quality recycling process uh, for the 310 bear. So where we are in the business case, we need to further detail it on a plant, country and region basis because there are differences which need to be accounted for. We still have to run the environmental assessment um, and we're going to further work to assess the pot potential mechanisms for the subsidies because, um, of course, um, sorting and recycling, waste management without subsidies is something which not, nobody would uh, expect to be implemented. We do have um, not only a technical proof of concept, which we knew we have, but also a business case which starts to uh, show the value. Um, then I think that you will agree with me that it's time for us in CFLEX to come to some final conclusions on the quality recycling process, um, which are that um, it is actually the strategy for the recycling, for the waste management and recycling industry for flexible packaging to increase the volume and the economic value of recycling in Europe. And uh, obviously there are three very important objectives, additional objectives which would be met by implementing um, the quality recycling process as the way forward for Europe. And these are the following. Um, it, it is a way to help Europe um, reach the uh, higher recycling targets for plastics. It is a way to contribute to the demand of the Circular Plastic Alliance to deliver high quality polyethylene and polypropylene recyclates for demanding applications when food grade is not needed, at least for the moment. And last but not least, important, this um, strategy would help avoid dramatic economic effects, which will inadvertently come once the Basel Convention would be um, applied and all the other um, amendments to the legislation we're hearing about will come to um, in place. Um, also the non-recycled plastic tax, which we already know that it's a fact, um, it's something which can be impacted by bringing to market more and more um, quality recycling through mechanical recycling um, and um, any, anything else which can contribute.